<laughs> hey guys, uh, I got through Call of Duty Vanguard. I have no idea how it ballooned from 18 minutes to 40 minutes, <laughs> but I get a little angry. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy the review. Thanks for clicking on the video. I definitely needed my boy, my partners, my sponsors, G Fuel, to get through this one. Uh, guys, we just activated the 30% off code. You know how we do. That is the largest discount that we that they offer. Uh, and they just got this new flavor. Uh, what is it? Party Punch? Oh, God. Party Punch. Really, really good flavor. It's the second Sonic flavor since the first one was so successful. So, guys, uh, consider picking up a tub of Sonic Party Punch to support the show. It helps out. Click the links down below. And I hope you guys enjoy the review. Hey guys, uh, another year, another Call of Duty. Uh, this time, Call of Duty Vanguard. It sucks. And for most of you, that'll do. I thought I'd put as much effort into my review of Call of Duty as Sledgehammer Games put into their follow-up to 2017's Call of Duty World War II. Hey! How you like the game? Is it good? Give me a full breakdown out of 10. Give me the angry review right now. They're getting worse. Uh, but for some ungodly reason, people keep buying them, and outlets keep issuing 8 and 9s out of 10s like candy, oblivious to the franchise staleness. Wait, that's the same move. <laughs> Yeah, this, the same <laughs> this is <laughs> fucking stupid. They all go to the same training school? What is this? <laughs> we only taught one move. <laughs> Uh, so I guess let's get into this year's title. Uh, how can I describe playing Call of Duty Vanguard? Um... I'm trying to fu- oh, Hello? Oh shit! You saw him, he came right for me. Oh, there's his brother, Billy. And now Billy's dead. He came right for me. You saw it, it was self-defense. Oh, and here comes his brother, uh, Schlockenstein. And now Schlockenstein is dead. Ah, here's his other brother, uh, Richter. And now Richter is dead. Oh shit, it's France! Ooh, France got two shots off. Oh fuck! I think I've got them all. No shit, it's Dieter! Dieter is dead. Weber! Gunther, no! Don't do it, Gunther! You know, it's like playing in the same old sandbox that other kids play in with the same old broken toys that you've already played with your entire fucking life and all you really end up getting by the end of it is parasites and ringworm. Oh, and as time passes, animals end up taking a shit in it. And there, it's dirty, it's gross, yet every year people keep going back to that goddamn sandbox because of some bullshit marketing. What is this year's new bullshit? Do they go into a harder, more complete boots on the ground World War II experience with boots on the ground? That brings back the intense, visceral boots on the ground gameplay our fans love. You know, this is a boots on the ground experience. Uh, so fans are very excited to sort of see how it feels. Yeah, we're, we're how back did you do to that? Boots on the Ground, man. It's yeah. awesome. Going back to Boots on the Ground. Going back to World War II with Call of Duty Vanguard. It was very important to make sure that we... Just go back to Boots on the Ground. No. Hey. I thought this game was Boots on the Ground. 
There's no boots at all. Oh. This year they placed the emphasis on characters, combat pacing, which is ridiculous, and adaptive reactive environments. Bullshit marketing. Are you kidding me? Adaptive destructible environments. Hey guys, check out the reactive cover. Whoa, destructible environments. Isn't that a fucking tagline on the goddamn box? Yeah, the only thing that breaks is like walls and like maybe Yeah, the that's not even and I'm like that's so pathetic. And it's not like any wall, it's only like these uh these weird piece of shit walls that they half ass built. <laughs> Look at that fucking reactive cover, dude. <laughs> yeah, the moral of the story is, don't play and use sandboxes, kids. Who the fuck's over here? Mm. Was it you? Was it you? Was it you? What? I'm fighting! What are you doing? He did. So we go back to World War II doing basically Call of Duty World War II all over again, only worse. Oh! Oh! What the fuck? We got flying enemies. They fly now. The Germans fly now. They fly now. In fact, you've played this crap too. Many times at several moments in the game, you're going to have a sense of deja vu from better games. Guys, I'm getting flashbacks like I have played this before. It wasn't there a level like this where the tank started to roll in? It, it was almost exactly like this. Or am I having some hardcore deja vu or something? A feeling you've played this exact level before. It's got the obligatory action pieces broken up by crappy stealth levels. And all that is here in their uninspired glory. Now with poisonous dogs. What the fuck just happened? <laughs> you were killed by a dog. Did the dog come up and fucking stab me in, in, in the fucking heart? What the shit was that? You didn't even give me no goddamn animation where the dog bites me and shit and lets me get out. I mean, I didn't know the second a dog touches you in real life, you fucking die. Because they couldn't even be bothered to do an animation for those. Awesome. Ah! We all know that the, when a dog touches you, you're dead. Fucking poisonous dogs. Come on, comrades. It's a man, not a dog. Dogs. Are they poisonous dogs like in the campaign? So let's get to the first thing different about Vanguard. It's characters. Well, according to the developers themselves, uh, apparently Call of Duty as a franchise has never really had any good well-known characters. Wait, what? We came into this process saying, how do we make the iconic COD characters? Because you don't really have that in Call of Duty right now. You know, when you think about um, a game like, I don't know, Halo, you think of Master Chief or whatever. When you think of COD, there's really that standout, like, oh, these characters. And so we came into this. Um, I could name a ton from the top of my head, and I'm not even a Call of Duty lore nut, but okay. You don't really have that. So what's their solution? 
Task Force One. I can get in, find a window. Clear the gunners out of the courtyard. I might like you after this. Do it. Wait, Lucas, you're with me. Alina? Whoa, bro! No way! Did you see that? Shit, bitch. Left my main at home. Get some hot boy shit, bitch. They try their best to make you love these characters in this elite team. The leader, the Aussie, the female sniper, and the pilot. The American. <laughs> try that again, Crowd, and we're gonna have a real fucking problem. Giving them one or two levels each to build up their backstory in, in flashback scenes. Look, that shit is impressive right here. You got all this stuff going on outside, looking good. There's like little, uh, you know, moments where it's like, okay, players are really going to remember, you know, these little things. See, this stuff here is going to get you more immersed. Like, you know, the community stuff, talking to people, you know, and then you're like, fuck, I need to defend my community. That feels good. That that can get you more immersed. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Um, that's not good. What is that? Oh shit! Fucking wee ah! Wee man! Only a bowl of gumbo or whatever it is. Only by the end in this disjointed narrative, you don't really care about any of them. Maybe aside from the sniper. And so the objective of their strong, memorable characters here fails. That's why they're putting so much time and effort into the introduction of each character so that they can then continue their stories. The problem is... I don't care! In fact, most of the time, you are more watching Call of Duty Vanguard rather than participating. If there's one good thing that I could say about the game is that the cutscenes are nice and they're lengthy. We've not seen him, so he's minced meat. Carajo! Coño, carajo! I like that. I'm a pistol, that motherfucker. It really tries to supplement creativity with cutscenes. We're inspired a lot by what cinema does. Early on, we had this idea of, hey, what if we could actually partner with someone in the film industry? And that's how we got to talking to Hoyte Van Hoytema. It's allowing us to bring in some of his sensibilities and his philosophies into our format. It just has a very different set of rules and a very different set of sort of philosophies as if you would be making a movie. But what if you would approach this game as if it was a movie? Yeah, they're lengthy and cool, but I'm not playing, I'm watching as if you were doing a film. And that is a very different mindset. For like the whole team. And I think film breaks a lot of walls and incorporating more film concepts help us break our walls. Play a level, watch a movie. At least there's a lot of cutscenes here, you know, so it's production Boy, value. Nothing. When you're dead. They're what trying really hard to make you care matters. about the characters. You, Play a level, watch a movie. That level was programmed very poorly. I don't care what he did before. And when now back to the movie. I still don't Currently in progress. But we're not in this shithole because of him. Video time. Surviving Stalingrad was no small feat. I want you to find out everything you can about this unit. It will be my pleasure, sir. You will speak of this to no one else and report directly to me. What is this? This team is fascinating. Let, let's ferry them out around all of our top secrets. Shoot them! <laughs> but you'll just end up wanting to have played those better cutscene sections where actual things and innovative sequences happen. Cutscene! Oh, 
Well, see, this is what I want to play right here. I'd like to play this, please. No? But what if you would approach this game as if it was a movie? Okay. Can I, can I play? And I think film breaks a lot of walls and incorporating more film concepts help us break our walls. Oh. It just has a very different set of rules and a very different set of sort of philosophies as if you would be making a movie. Oh, I'm screwing up the auto. Grab it. What? 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 It's good. Wait a minute. Okay, Call of Duty, I guess you take over. Let me know when you're done. Too soon. I can't believe I'm agreeing with you on something. Glad we're all getting along. Rising is right out of here, can't be far. I suppose the graphics this year's are, are great looking at times. It's as if there's three different levels of graphics here. The cutscenes, which look amazing. Papa's face graphics. And you make your old man proud. Man, sometimes the graphics look really good. And then sometimes it looks poo-poo. Like, I don't understand. And then there are times where other people's faces look like shit. <laughs> ah! Oh my god, that graphics on that dog were pretty bad. <laughs> Turned into three polygons. <laughs> then the game will bounce back and forth between these three fidelities. Meanwhile, the gameplay in the campaign is subpar. Levels are restrictive and poorly designed with invisible walls everywhere. God damn it, that's why. I'm so tired of it looking very open and there being tons of invisible walls everywhere. And it's, it's not that clear. And then these large blades of grass, which you cannot walk through these blades of grass are too he too too heavy sorry so let's go around the set piece battles that single player cod games are known for are so much worse here <laughs> these are all japanese soldiers what is going on You telling me that they just walked right in front of the fucking tank? It, what? A, this is this is uh, this is really bad. You can't even get your cinematic set pieces uh, choreographed correctly. I think there's a lot of moments that maybe traditionally they would have been flamboyant and crazy, uh, and now they're much more restrained, and suddenly they become more meaningful. What? And then and then watch them all get oh I was trying to get them they all get gunned down by the motherfucking Shermans there with their light machine gun. We had a lot of discussions about uh, uh, how can we make things feel more real and how can we make things uh, uh, feel as if they're part of our real world. Yeah, these are all Japanese soldiers. Look at all of them. Look at this guy. <laughs> <laughs> let me just casually walk away in war and let me just walk in front of the fucking Sherman. Um, the biggest source of realism is imperfection. Just trying to make him blow up real good. supposed to happen no because I ran out of ammunition no you can't it's scripted <laughs> and those kind of little little choices all over the the whole thing I think they they were very important in adding that kind of realism Oh, you know what? I think I gotta go get that specific charge. Fuck. No. What? 
what? Wait, wait a minute. And those kind of little little choices all over the the whole thing. I think they they were very important in adding that kind of realism. Wait a minute. I threw three fucking grenades at the goddamn thing, and it didn't blow. The biggest source of realism is imperfection. This whole thing is fucking scripted and bullshit. Did you know that grenades only blow up wood if you go up the middle? I didn't know that. You see, you could be tricked. Back in World War II, grenades do not destroy wood unless you go up the middle. My grandpa told me. God damn, that's a big grenade. You're on point. We'll follow you in. That's a Michael Bay grenade. Holy shit. Almost laughable at times how incompetent they are. Wade, you idiot. Oh, God damn it, Wait, Wait! 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 Just move your head just a little. Wait, Pete! Arthur Lucas! I played on veteran and blew through the campaign, Dude. but put it on the hardest, suddenly What's everyone gets pixel perfect accuracy it. and shotguns become sniper rifles that kill you from across the map. Whatever. Did I leave this on the hardest? Who with perfect aim? Who? Alright, it just goes from stupid difficulty to fucking dumb difficulty. It goes from stupid easy to stupid hard. There's nothing in between. Hey, do something. Give me your sniper rifle. No! No! Alright, I'm gonna go take a shit. Fuck this game. There is no happy medium. And then there's the boss battles. Yep, COD tries and fails to do these as well. There's even this David vs. Ellie battle with a knife that is straight ripped off from The Last of Us. Russian bitch. What? I just killed you. I would have stabbed you like seven times. Wanting to defuck. Shiza! Ha! Shiza. bitch! Not a fourth time. You're not gonna do it a fourth time, are you? It's always in threes. Running won't save you! The one time the game tries to innovate with a visually impressive Pacific fighter plane sequence is an in-between an on-rail shooter and total control. It's as if Call of Duty is again too afraid to let its mass audience do some real flying. See, I can't actually do a real full maneuver. I'm trying to spin around. But no, 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 don't! I'm, I am, I am! I swear to God, I am! I don't, no, don't end my mission! I was trying, man! What, why is it? I don't understand with this view shit. It's like half assisted and half not assisted. It's, and it's frustrating me to no end. I mean, it's visually impressive, and I just need a little more control. Have more faith that your Call of Duty player is gonna, you know, do fine. And it's way too short, and it's a carbon copy of what they did in 2017, only third person back then. Oh, this is actually done a little bit better than Oh, my fancy flying. 
So we've got a total of nine levels here. With the pilot mission, it's like 10 minutes long, so it's really just eight levels with eight lengthy cutscenes to watch while you twiddle your thumbs. No collectibles, worse missions than in World War II COD, four years later, four years later, this is what we get. You guys do something! We're a fucking elite squad of fucking six, not an elite squad of one, go! They better be dead. But at least there's no loot boxes on the beach. Gotta admit. The destruction of Nazi tyranny. Where are those coming from? Soldier, get back in line. Soldier! What is going on? And this game will go on and on about Project Phoenix, the supposed thing in the story that will have the Nazis rise even after they've lost and Hitler has killed himself. Project Phoenix had to be there somewhere and Richter was our ticket. Project Phoenix. Oh, that's what it's called. Could be. Only they never really fucking say what it is. Yeah, he's taking the rocket underground. How's he getting out? Hunt down Reisinger. Bury the Reich for good. There, there is no Reich, guys. Stop it. The the, the, we, we, we are we making together? our way into Germany, Reisinger. into Berlin, and Hitler's dead, and you guys are worried about four idiots who are screaming about the Fourth Reich? Yeah, he's taking the Reich underground. They don't go into it. You don't play a level with Project Phoenix. They don't have enough balls to actually do something insane at the end. From the ashes shall rise our vision. Here it is, what we've been waiting for. What is Project Phoenix? The Fourth Reich. The Fourth Reich? Are they going zombies? Are they going powers of the occult? Or is it literally the one battered battalion left of a broken army with no supplies and no ammunition? Remember me? What is it here? I mean, let, let me know. Fuck historical accuracy at this point. If you're gonna give us the same boring ass campaign over and over, live a little, Cod! Towards the end, the, the Germans literally could not supply their army with, with fresh infantry and... and I, I don't know what you're doing. There better be, I, there better be zombies, I guess. That's our only hope. That, that somehow Call of Duty will go meta and then t t take the campaign, the historical campaign, and mix it with the fucking Reich and then fight demons from portals. Dude, if this game ends like that, I'll be like, oh my god. <laughs> nope, instead they sequel bait. If you wanna know what it is and get actual cool fantasy style levels, then maybe buy Vanguard 2 that the devs desperately would like to do with these boring one note characters. No thanks. We wanna make Vanguard 2 and Vanguard 3 because we have two more stories that we really want to tell with these characters. So we are hoping that if people love them as much as we do, that we get to continue to tell the story of these people and make them sort of like figureheads for this era of COD, basically. So there so that's the campaign. Disappointing. That's Done better and even about. World at War all those years ago. Oh, Hell, it's... It. World War II COD was better. I'm not sure the campaign is worth 60 bucks. We're gonna have to make up for some of that over here in Zombies and Multiplayer. Multiplayer is even worse in my opinion. They went back to old Call of Duty and, and somehow did things worse. They're bankrupt of ideas and I'm tired of it. It's less innovative, less inspired than World War II. That game introduced that tank mode, right? Uh, and here it's completely gone. The most basic modes are the only thing left. They've literally stopped trying. It's the same guns that we've all played with a thousand times in World War II games, only with the pick a system on top. This pacing that they talked about, it's smoke up your ass. Sub pins. Tactical pacing, 6v6. I don't think you can say tactical when you're in a Call of Duty game. 
Technical. <laughs> soul pa Hold on. This is a soul pacing. We gotta play that. Oh. There's this tactical oh. pacing and there's this soul pacing. This is this new pacing thing, which I am really not feeling in the game. <laughs> what, what's the difference? Just a map. It's a playlist of the stupid d fucking maps and modes that are the same. And, and the time to kill in this game is insanely short, leading to barely any tactics again. We've gone back to chickens running around with their heads cut off. God damn it, because I used my fucking. They're all coming from the left side. I mean, this even though it's S and D, I always just have the urge to run around like a headless chicken and then find someone. Yeah. And just kill them. That fucking STG is so laser accurate. Like that. That's what you have to get. That this that upgrade. Longer to kill somebody, huh? That guy just died from his fucking foot being shot off. No. Longer to kill somebody, huh? Everybody trying to be fucking Rambo, not cooperating for two seconds this time before dying a thousand times, and hopefully you've killed a ton more people than you've died. Yeah, the hell out. Oh, that's don't take, uh, take a longer time to kill than the actual people. Yeah, and they're insta kill you. They're still the poison dogs. This insta kill on the dog is so stupid. Enemy care package in back. You're back to the most boring standard COD modes no that we'd had for them. decades. What the fuck? The like every fucking year. Call of Duty comes out with this kill confirm mode and people still don't fucking understand to pick up the goddamn dog tags. It, I, it's, I don't know why I'm raging. It's not the game's fault. It's the Call of Duty player base. Yeah. And I'm winning. And I'm, I just want them to fucking play the fucking Try. mode. They're too fucking stupid. No wonder Call of Duty is so successful every year and they don't have to do anything except for the same shit because this is the player base. It's the player base. They do add a new one called Patrol, but it's pure fucking chaos and I'm not sure how anybody has any semblance what the fuck is going on. Uh, oh, here's the new D. one. We got the new one, Patrol. Yeah, there we go. I'm curious oh, to fuck. see how this goes. Ah! <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, machine gun! Oh, my body! My body! Oh, your body! What is going on? This is the worst mode Call of Duty has ever come up with, ever. How are they behind me already? Got this bonds are at random. This is fucking stupid. This is... They couldn't have made this any more Call of Duty-like. What? Oh, it is as well. That. What Dude. the fuck did I just spawn literally next to somebody? What is going on? What the fuck? That's just being the uh, trader for this game mode. What the fuck? What's going on here? <laughs> In that sense, it's fun for a match or two, but nobody wants to play this as the main mode. But then you slowly realize what this mode is actually for. Purchase digitally now and get the Frontline Weapons Pack. And hell, what the whole fucking game is actually for! Digital pre-orders get instant access to the Night Raid, Mastercraft, and Black Ops, Cold War, and Warzone. It's a leveling system for the guns that are gonna be added to Call of Duty Warzone. I wanna end me. Digital pre-orders get instant access to the Night Raid, Mastercraft, and Operator Arthur Kingsley. It is a weapon leveling simulator. No wonder people like Patrol, the, the COD player base, because they're 
fucking levels their guns fast. I never, oh, never want to play that game mode again. And I want. No, that was patrol. And I want. <laughs> 80% of the COD community said this is the best thing ever because fast, easy kills, they all get because they all have ADHD. But no, I think they're all trying to fucking level as fast as fucking possible. In this yeah, mode, you definitely do that. Yeah, you can level up like all your guns really quickly in this mode only. Mm, but in terms of like, is it a fun and interesting mode? No, it's not. It's pure chaos. But some people like pure chaos. I particularly like a little bit more skill to go along with my gameplay. Like that, what dude. the fuck did I just spawn literally next to somebody? What is going on? What the fuck? Else. And finally, the game loves to exclaim that this year's duty has 20 maps at launch. 20! Whoa! More than all the other CODs because and, and because of that sole thing you're gonna be playing its multiplayer for months! Not if the game itself is shit! And those maps are mostly recycled from better COD games. It's not much like they did a bunch of new innovative work on new fucking maps. No! This year's multiplayer, I, I played for like a day or two, and that's about its limit. I don't care to play any more of it. A shame. Default FOV. I don't know, to be honest. Because like mine is like at the max, and then all of a sudden the play of the game one is like at this like very close up. FOV. So the campaign is disappointing and short, with more movies than game with crap characters, and the multiplayer has regressed and actually gotten worse. A blatant excuse to level your guns for Warzone. This Call no, of Duty provides nothing. Literally nothing. It provides World War II weapons that you can level quickly for Warzone, is what it provides. That's even bullet point features on the game box. You cannot put in the goddamn feature list of Vanguard, you cannot put that Warzone, made by a different developer, or, you know, obviously they're all on the same team, made a new map. And they're going to do a new anti-cheat system for Warzone. That is not a feature of Call of Duty Vanguard. Of call, this is Call of Duty Vanguard. When you are literally pushing features of a completely different game. World War II combat like never before. <laughs> so how's it zombie mode? Oh, we just went into a circle. And now we must return to Stalingrad again. That's it? That was very, very exciting okay. and challenging. I know you're not a zo zombies fan, but like this bad. is like super bare bones right now. It's awful! That was fucking lame! I, ne I have never been so turned off from a zombies mode from Call of Duty. Is this what you guys like, chat? Let us hope whoever answers is not worse than caught. It is literally the worst zombie mode in years. The worst one I've ever played. What they were going for here is just not fun. They focus on level types rather than fun zombie waves. So you'll either be escorting a zombie head and transmit, uh, harvesting dog tags and harvest, or lasting against a timer and blitz where they come out of the same holes over and over. Just the same fucking, are you, this, this has to be a joke. This is a joke, right? They literally repackaged the multiplayer modes and maps over and over for zombies. There's no cutscenes, there's no story, there's no characters, there's no creativity, no nothing! If I don't no, see a ray gun, that's then a, That's a terrible way to try to find a ray gun. Well, how else am I supposed to find it? There's no wall guns or anything. The only way that you can find a ray gun before was via the mystery box, but... Okay, thank God you paid for it. So I've got 30, I've got 10,000 to go through. <laughs> I have yet to see like a ray gun through it. I don't think there's a ray gun or anything in the box. Why would you take oh. out a gun that everybody loves? Ray, no ray gun, no, no mythical weapons, no ray gun, thunder gun, th uh, wonder waffle. Ray. Completely oh, unfinished shit. at release. The most bare oh, no, bones no, no. they could have gotten away with. Yes. Yes. 
Whoa, that, that was cool looking. <laughs> for half a second. Cool. Treyarch was put in oh. charge of zombies in this one forever. It, it must have been Treyarch's C team who were on vacation half the time. You don't even get interesting zombie types or gross, intimidating bosses. Maybe fucking Nazi demons. Or these demons that talk to each other in the mode because you work for one. It's like, there's no story. They're nothing. None of that. No fucking ray gun. No mysticals. No thunder gun. No waffle. It's, there's not even an Easter egg. Why would you take out the guns that everyone loves? That is beyond me. Are, are you out of your mind? Oh, fuck. Hold up on it. Hold up on it. Oh wait, that's it. Ah, fantastic. Rest. I. Well, that was dumb. All I had to do was hold F on it, and then all of them disappeared. That's it. That's it. That's fucking it. I thought there would be a guy to cut, cut fucking cutscene or a boss or fucking something. Yeah, here we go. No, no battle pass. Buy the battle pass. <laughs> it's as if they had to throw this mode together in a week. Because they slacked off all fucking year and they realized, oh shit, my paper is due tomorrow, fuck. And they used the assets that they already had from World War II and just dumped it in here without any fucking care. They just dumped it all into the mode. Um, the biggest source of realism is imperfection. Um... This is why I don't like playing zombie modes in games because of shit like this. It is insulting that this game is $70 on PS5 or Xbox Series X. They did absolutely nothing to deserve this. And it's not any different from the even overpriced $60 PC version. And then there's the outright $100 Ultimate Edition that's a big fuck you to gamers. The whole world is burning. Sometimes the only way to put out the flames is with Morph. Call of Duty Vanguard on digital now. What do you get? Well, five hours of double XP, three operator skins, three weapon blueprints, and the battle pass. The ultimate edition is loaded with content for the ultimate fan, including the battle pass bundle with 20 tier skips, three operator skins, Three weapon blueprints with tracer rounds, access to cross-gen content, and includes 10 hours of double XP to enhance your Call of Duty experience. Um, we're excited about what the player is going to experience on Call of Duty Vanguard. Are you fucking kidding me? Get the fuck out of here with this garbage. The final verdict for Call of Duty Vanguard is a four. It's a four out of 10. This is a soulless cash grab, now more apparent than it's ever been. No matter how good the intentions were of the writers, it is below average in all three of its modes on offer. Campaign, multiplayer, and the shockingly bad zombies this year. That's it! That's it! That's fucking it! Are you, are you out of your mind? It's with more fire. Mode reference. No. 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 <laughs> they said it. They said it. Vanguard. Oh my god. Trash. Trash. Boo. Boo. As it stands now, it's basically a gun leveler for the World War II guns for Warzone. Even its title screen is a collective sigh. Oh. I have had enough. I, as you can tell, it's a, I, no, I'm done. I'm done with this. The game serves as an example of the laziness and the creative bankruptcy of the franchise in Activision. Proof that we don't really need to be forcing developers to create yearly uninspired Call of Duties to cash in. Worse, this one is, 
what is it, three years in development? I don't know, the last one that Sledgehammer did was 2017, and all these years, and this is what they come up with in 2021, go back and watch my World War II uh, Call of Duty review and see if it looks worse or better than this. This is awful and I'm tired of a Call of Duty. The only good thing recently has been the war zone, okay? Hopefully, which is not gonna happen, but Call of Duty will actually do something innovative the next year, which is what we've been saying. <laughs> Early access to the open beta. Digital pre-orders get instant access to the Night Raid, Mastercraft, and Black Ops, Cold War, and Warzone. <sighs> what? Um... Guys, don't forget, Party Punch, 30% off right now. Thank you to my partners, G Fuel, for helping me get through Call of Duty Vanguard. I'm going to be doing a hell of a lot more than this for the upcoming uh, Battlefield 2042. Uh, Hopefully, it is a lot better than what we just played. Okay, I uh, hope to see you on the next Angry Joe Show. Click those links below and support the show. Bye, guys.